guest here. It's Tim Tebow. Do you guys want to give it up for Tim Tebow or no? What's up? What's up? Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't understand why is Tim sitting over here. He's your friend. Yeah, he was your you know, personal it's, friend. It's all right. It's all right. This it's is no where they told deal. me to sit. That's yeah. all. That's all. It's no big deal. What's going on, big boy? How you doing, man? It's good to see you, my man. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Doing a great job. Yeah. yeah. Trying, 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 trying to take people's television jobs. Yeah. <laughs> We're worried. Right. You, you want to take someone's job here at the desk? Mm. No, not at, all. not at all. You done? I'll let y'all continue to argue. There we okay. go. There we go. Um, we obviously know your relationship with the show, and outside of that, though, we're gonna hear. We're here to talk about. I've been involved in the show before once or twice people have bit, talked to you uh, talked about you Just on the show bit. i don't know this guy are you guys friends at all friendly because he says you guys have never I'm had friends a with all three of y'all i mean in terms of outside of what we see you guys don't really know each other that well i mean right? but when i see y'all i talk to all of you i He's always Chad, great. Hey, hey, hey. I've said everybody all the time. I said it yeah. all the time. Tim Tebow is my friend. Personal friend. <laughs> He's my friend. Best friend. You understand? I missed is you, he not man. Your best I friend? missed you. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, all right. So, so good, you didn't pick anybody to win. You you put yourself right down the middle here. But let's talk about the keys to the game and talk about the game in general. Bucks and Ducks. What do you think about the matchup? I love it. I think it's two great brands. I think it's two great offenses. I think the keys to this game is can Oregon stop Ohio State's run? Can Ohio State stop Oregon's run? Or you don't even have to stop it. Can you contain it? Because both of these offenses, let's be honest, they're very similar offenses. Coach Meyer went to Chip Kelly. They've talked back and forth. They talk with Coach Helfridge. They're friends. They know each other's offenses. They go against similar offenses in practice. And can the 3-4 defense for Oregon stop Ohio State's run? And can the 4-3 defense from Ohio State, and they might switch it up a little bit in this game, can they stop Ohio State's running attack? And if they can, then th that'll make it a lot more difficult to get play action over the top. Which running attack are you more worried about? Well, I'm more worried about the downhill running attack of Ohio State, but Marcus Merritt is the best player in the country. So I think Ohio wow. State has a better offensive line and a better defensive line, but I think the best player in the country and the best player in this game is Marcus Mariota. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tim, obviously we know where your heart lies because you played for the head coach at Ohio State when you were at Florida. Give us some insight in, into why Urban Meyer has proven over time to be such a great head coach. Because he's a great motivator. He finds a way to give his team an edge. I was there a little over a week ago, and he asked me to talk to the team. So I said, sure, what do you want me to talk about? So he, he thinks about it during practice, and he comes back to me an hour and a half later, and he says, talk about having an edge. Anything you want, but talk about having an edge. So that's why I did. I talked to their team about having an edge, and every game there's something different. So leading up to the Alabama game, the first few days, He's, man, Alabama's unbelievable. There are, you know, so many national championships and really wow. feeding that into his team. And then getting closer to the game, it was, well, they're not the same Alabama they're past. You know, we can beat them. Their, their secondary gives up all these big plays to Auburn. And they, he starts to motivate his players and give them more and more beliefs. And then when uh, Auburn lost to Wisconsin and uh, Michigan State mm -hmm. um, uh, came back yep, and beat Baylor, he used that. He said, look at it. That's the Big Ten. We just beat Baylor mm -hmm. and we just beat Auburn who gave, and we destroyed. Wisconsin, and then Wisconsin beat Auburn, who gave Alabama a hard, team, hard time, so yep. he used that to motivate his players and give them an edge, and now his edge going into this game is 16 seconds. He's saying it to his players every day, 16 seconds, because that's the, the, time, yeah. the, the time between plays that Oregon runs, is 16 seconds. Okay. He says, we're a good enough team, but if you, are, if you are strong enough not to get fatigued in those 16 seconds, we will win this game. That's what he's preaching to his team right now. But how different is that from other coaches you've been around? It, he's, every coach that I've been around is great before the game. They're able to get you hyped, but because that's the environment. You're playing in a huge game with thousands of fans, and it's exciting. It's really easy to get someone hyped before a game, but it's hard to get someone focused and motivated for a Tuesday walkthrough, for a Wednesday practice. How are you mentally and physically prepared to be at your best on a Monday when you're playing this, you know, your defense that you've played for the last two and a half years? That's where he's great, because he always finds a way to give you an edge on those days, and that's what really makes the difference. Yet, when you played for him at Florida, you were viewed from the outside as the motivator of the team. Yeah. Are you saying on the inside, he was the sort of unsung motivator of your, your well, championship Coach has teams? always been a, yeah. a huge motivator. And the other thing that he would do is he would let his leaders lead, which mm. he is doing right now at Ohio State, because they have some big-time leaders, and they're a very close team. I mean, their offensive line has said to their team, hey, put the game on us because we will win you the game because we are going to get four yards every time you run the ball. Run inside zone. 
because we're going to push the defense line back. That's their mentality. So he creates that, that environment within a team where they, those guys believe and they take that responsibility among themselves where they say, hey, I want to be the best I can be. I remember um, my junior year when we were able to win the national championship, we lost to Ole Miss and David Nelson, who ended up catching the game-winning touchdown pass in the national championship game, who wasn't playing at that time. After we had a team meeting, he went to a coach and he said, I want to do anything I can possibly do to make an impact on this team because of what Coach Meyer had said to him. And that was in the middle of the season. All of a sudden, this guy grows and grows and grows and then catches the game-winning touchdown pass in the national championship game. Wow. That's what Coach Meyer does for people. And to share another story, Cardell Jones, who has balled the last two weeks, wow. this dude has been there for every meeting and every practice with Coach Meyer at Ohio State. His first workout he passed out in the warm-up. Within 10 minutes, he passed out in the warm-up. Showed up at 217 pounds, fat and blubbery, out of shape. Mm. And right now, he was at 20% body fat. Right now, he's at 10% body fat at 251 pounds. And you saw him last week lower his shoulder mm. on some Alabama defense. That's... The, that's what happens when you're in a program where you're there for three years, you learn, you transform, and you improve. And I think something that gets lost in college football and football in general is improvement. How guys can change. How you can go from one thing one day into improving and being something different the next. And that is something that Mickey Marotti, their strength coach, Urban, all the rest of their coaches, they're doing right now at Ohio State is they're taking players and they're molding them into being young men that are very good football players. Okay, but time out. You referred to that infamous loss to Ole Miss your junior year. After that game, you gave the most famous speech probably in the history of college football, right? So, so that helped get everybody back on the right page. Well, what got everybody back on the right page is, the, is not what I said to the, to the media and the fans. That was an apology to the fans. But one of the things that got everybody back on the, the right page is the next day we, we called a, a players-only meeting. We said, coaches, y'all can come. But uh, me and some uh -huh. of the other leaders got together with that team. And we said, listen, we're going out. We're having a full padded practice. And if you want to be part of this team, you're going to show up and you're going to grind today. And we went out and we had a scrimmage. Offense on defense, Sunday? On Sunday. Whew. And it was the most intense. Um, you know, me against spikes, everything, full on, full blown, and it was, and it that changed our season because we knew when we walked off the field Sunday night that this team was different because we were lackadaisical going. We knew we were good, but we were lackadaisical. We weren't 100% focused on uh, attention to detail on everything we we're doing. After that practice, we were a different football team. Break down for us how something like that happens to an Urban Maya team, to a Tim Tebow team, to anybody when you're a nationally renowned program and the expectations are there but somehow some way complacency kicks in we see or hear about it every season with somebody where does that come from you lose your edge That's why do you lose your edge is what i'm asking because you do something you do the same thing over and over and over again and you think hey man we're you know we're good enough to show up and win these games and you're practicing and you're mentally you're going through everything and you're studying and you're working but sometimes it takes you know a kick in the butt you know to say hey you know we're not as good as we think we have to find our edge again so we can dominate and it's not a, and it's not good enough to just show up and say we're playing at our best we have to play angry we have to play with the chip on our shoulder we have to play upset and when you do that, you're a different team. Yep. All right, we're going to go to break. Uh, when we come back, you want to pick some NFL games? Mm -hmm. Stick around? Sure. All right, we're going to pick some NFL games. Uh, what about those Cowboys? Yeah. Woo!